Hello, in today's video, I'm going to be reviewing two of the very most popular REITs, Federal Realty Investment Trust, ticker symbol FRT, and Realty Income Corporation, the monthly dividend company. I'm going to be doing a head to head just like I did in my previous video. So we'll compare the two and see which one's best. At the end, I'll also go through and show you some of the bits from my more complicated spreadsheet that I use when I research any particular share so that you can see a little bit more in depth. It do, I don't show you everything, but I show you a lot more than I do in my normal head to head like I did last time. So I'll show you more of that so you get a little bit of the behind the scenes research there as well and I'll explain some of the things I look at and why. And then I'll also explain to you my thoughts on what price I would be buying either of these at. I will also give you a forecast of my prediction of how much I think these shares are going to go up to as well as what the analysts think. So you've got the comparison and then you can make your own decision. If you're new to this channel, welcome. My name's Andy and on this channel I talk about money and success. If you're interested in either of those two topics, please don't hesitate to hit that subscribe button down below, hit the notification bell and then you'll get notified every time I post a video. If you enjoy this video and find this useful, please do remember to give it a thumbs up. Thank you. Next thing I need to do is just quickly give a disclaimer. I'm not a financial advisor, so this is not financial advice. This is just the results of my own research or parts of it. If you're interested in that, great. If you want to invest in anything, that's entirely up to you, but don't be doing it based on my research. You need to do your own research. Don't be blaming me, folks. That's the gist of that. That's that over. Let's get into this. First, we're going to take a look at the risk portfolio because obviously REITs have taken a bit of a hit recently and the share prices are down. And ordinarily, people would say, well, REITs, it's just an income. There's no chance for um, capital gain. Well, actually, I disagree at the moment. I would say with REIT prices the way they are, it's actually a really good time to be looking at REITs because there's a good chance of an increase. So we'll have a look at the charts in a moment and, and talk about that. But one of the things we've got to think about is why have the prices dived? Why have they gone down so much? It's to do with the risk um, and the fear, basically. And as Warren Buffett says, be greedy when others are fearful and fearful when others are greedy. But of course, you do need to have some kind of logic behind your greed, if you like, to make sure that you're not just going to lose all your money. Let's have a little look now at each of these just to see the risk profile of each. And that'll be the first aspect for round one. And then we'll see how they score. So let's do that now. So we'll start with Realty Income Corporation, the monthly dividend company. It has 6,500 properties under long-term lease spread over 630 tenants. Why is that important? That's important because you need to have a good diversified portfolio if you're gonna have regular income of cash flow. So that if one tenant goes down, it doesn't mess up that cash flow and prevent the company from paying its dividends. And in this instance, it's trying to pay dividends monthly. I say trying. It's successfully paid over 599 consecutive monthly dividends. Next month, it'll be 600 monthly dividends consecutively. And for the last 26 years, it's increased the dividends year on year as well, which obviously is fab. What we want to look at is the diversification. So we'll look at industry diversification here on the website. And as you can see, there's a good spread of diversification even in the uk they even have some in puerto rico i believe properties so they've got aerospace apparel now some of these what i've not been able to ascertain is what rents have not been paid but we know if we look at this that some of these are going to be likely to have not paid their rents whilst others will have paid their rents just fine we look at their top 20 tenants, Walgreens, they're going to be paying the rents fine. 7-Eleven will be paying the rents fine. The Dollar General will be paying its rents fine. FedEx will be paying its rents fine. LA Fitness, on the other hand, may not be. AMC Theatres, we know AMC Theatres has been struggling to pay rents. So we know that'll be a problem. Regal Cinemas, they've all been closed. So they're going to not be paying the rent very likely. Lifetime Fitness, again, another one. And um, so these are the ones. Now, you can see in this right hand column, the percentage of revenue. You can see Lifetime Fitness makes 2.4%, Regal Cinemas 2.9%, AMC Cinemas 2.9%, LA Fitness 3.4%. So, you know, a ballpark figure, they've probably received 70 to 80% of their rents, maybe more, I don't know, but I've not been able to find the exact figure, unfortunately. But we can be certain of one thing, they won't have received all of their rents. However, they did pay the dividend last month. As far as I know, they've not cut any dividends yet. They've not announced to cut any dividends yet. So it's looking safe. And we're going to come to balance sheets in a moment. 
So I would say that's fairly well diversified. So now let's look at Federal and see how they're doing. Now they've been around since 1962. This is the main page. They've got spread of properties all over the place. And here you go. 52 years of consecutive dividend increases. Despite things going wrong, they have continued to increase their dividends. They are a dividend king. While the other one is a dividend aristocrat, with 26 years, this is 52 years. That's a long time, folks. Twice as long, in fact. So that is very impressive. Now, what they have done is they've actually given us an update for the current crisis. And here it explains the annualized base rent and it shows you the spread, which I think is very useful. And you can see 54% of our tenants are open and operating up from 47 as of May. 20% of the annualized base rents come from offices and residential. There is their portfolio diversification, which I think is good. And here you can see rent collection. So 54% of total May rent build recurring rents have been collected to date. Now bear in mind this was actually sent out as far as I can see in June. So I've not had a new update, so we don't know how they actually did in June, but I think it's safe to say they did better in June. This sheet here shows you what their highest collections were and what their lowest collections were. 95% of collections from residential tenants, 92% of collections from office tenants, and 45% of collections from realtor tenants. The sheet goes on and on. And if you want to find that sheet and read more for yourself, just literally click on the investor tab on their website and then just literally click there, view presentation, and that will take you to this sheet where you will be able to read all about it. So for risk, I'm actually going to give that a draw because both companies have a really good mix of tenants. Both have an amazing track record for paying dividends. I'd be amazed if either of these two dropped the dividends. It would be, I would say, more than the life's worth. But you, you can imagine if you're the in charge of a company that's paid dividends and increased the dividends consecutively for 52 years, and you're the guy that says, let's drop the dividends this quarter, it, you're going to get hung. It's just not going to happen, is it? So there's there's no way I don't think either of these two are going to drop the dividends. They're both still collecting rents. Um, I, what I didn't show you there with Federal Realty is they're in talks with the ones that aren't. I'm sure Realty Income are in the same kind of boat. And both, when we come to balance sheets, you'll see both have got plenty of cash. Federal Realty have, have drawn down extra cash. So they're both plenty enough cash to be able to carry on. Just dandy. Things will start to improve, no doubt, from now on in any way. And of course, the rents that weren't paid will simply have been deferred. They won't just let them off them completely. I'd be amazed if that happened. These are long-term leases and commercial leases at that. So I'd expect the money to even come in eventually. But even if it didn't, it wouldn't actually matter to these companies. They're that good, which we'll see when we look at the balance sheets in a moment. So for risk, I'm actually giving this a draw, one all, because I don't think there's any real risks on their assets. Their assets are great. They're not going anywhere. That's round one, a draw, one all. Okay, let's carry on now. So we'll look at the charts. What I want you to look at here is the percentage that is down. Now I've, I've written this off screen on my notes, but from the high, realty income is actually down 32.89% at the moment. So it's current share price of $56.99 is 32.89% down from its 52 week high. As you can see, it's 20% down year to date over the year. It's P to FFO is 17.4 and it's got a dividend yield of 4.92%. Let's take a look at federal now. So federal, ticker symbol FRT. Year to date it's down 40, just over 40%. From its 52 week high it's actually down 43.44%. Its price to FFO is slightly better at 14.27 and it's got a better dividend yield as well at 5.25%. So if we'd compare the two. So I'm giving all three of those to FRT, Federal Realty Trust, because the share price has dropped further. And because it's dropped further, I think it's got further to bounce back. Therefore, there's more chance of the capital gain there. The yield obviously is slightly higher and the price to FFO is slightly lower, which means it's slightly better value on that one metric. Bear in mind, there's many more metrics. And if you wait till the end, you'll see other metrics 
which actually paint a slightly different picture, if I'm honest with you, from my spreadsheet that I use that I don't normally show in my videos, but I'm going to show you parts of that today for in case you're interested in what I look at, some of the things I look at. Next, I want to review the income statements. The key thing I'm looking at here is the total revenues, and we can see year on year, Realty Income Corporation, the total revenue has been increasing. And if we scroll down, we can see the operating income has also been increasing year on year. And if we look at the net income, which I also like to look at there, the net income again has increased year on year without fail. And in fact, the net income has almost doubled. In fact, it has. I say almost. No, it hasn't. It's almost doubled. Yes, almost doubled in the last five years, which is fabulous because a company that's increasing its net income can continue to increase its dividends, which it has been doing anyway, which is obviously very good when you're looking at a dividend company. So that's Realty Income Corporation's income statement at a glance. Now let's look at Federal Realty Investment Trust's income statement at a glance. So again, then total revenues are increasing year on year. You'll notice there's a very small drop in the current trailing 12 months. The operating income, again, it's growing year on year. Again, a small drop in the trailing 12 months. And where's my net income? There's the net income. And the net income, again, year on year, solid, consistent growth. There was one drop there I see in 2018, and it's dropped just a little bit now in the current year, but not a lot. So that is Federal Realty Income's income statement. So for income statement, I'm going to give that one to Realty Income Corporation, um, simply because it, it was better, a, a much better income statement. The other income statement, there's nothing wrong with it as such. You had that one little drop, but it's lost a little bit in the trailing 12 months. So where really Realty Income hasn't, and it also had that little drop if you saw on the net income in 2018, whereas Realty Income virtually doubled over the five year period. So we've got to give that one, I think it's only fair to give that one to Realty Income or ticker symbol O. Next, we're going to look at the dividend safety. To do that, we again go on the income statement and this time I want you to particularly pay attention to the revenue per share versus the dividend per share. And you can see that each year that is far higher, almost double in fact. So they've got the revenue to pay the dividends. And currently, if you look in the trailing 12 months, the revenue per share is $4.79 per share, whereas the dividend per share is $2.74 per share. That's $2 surplus per share. So they've got no problems there. And um, while we're on this page, let's also just have a quick look at the FFO because that's an important little figure to see and that is increasing. So that's the free cash flow from operations and that is increasing year on year even to the current date. So that's an excellent little metric and that's good to know. Let's look at Federal Realty, tick symbol FRT. Again, its revenue per share is far bigger than its dividend per share. In some instances, like nearly three times as big. I'm just checking this down now every year. Yep, every single year it is bigger, almost three times as big. This is a very, very safe dividend but then you would expect that. And again, the FFO funds from free cash flow is increasing year on year with just a small drop recently. But again, that's nothing really to worry about. So as you can see, the revenue per share currently is $12.44 per share, whereas the dividend per share is $4.17 per share. So there's plenty of room for growth. There's no chance they're cutting that dividend anytime soon. So for dividend safety, we're gonna give this a draw because both of these have plenty of free cash. Actually, FRT had slightly more, but you know we can't penalize Realty Income Corporation for only having double. You know, they, they both have plenty of headroom to increase their dividends. They've got no problem at all in this area. Let's move on. So next, I want to quickly review the balance sheets of each company. So Realty Income Corporation, we'll take a look at the total real estate assets and we can see they're increasing. So we know, therefore, they're increasing their portfolio. 
If we look at total assets, we can see they're increasing year on year again. Total liabilities, they're also increasing, but good to see that they've decreased them in the current period, even though they've increased the assets. And in relation, they're always staying about the same. So I'm very happy with that balance sheet. That's absolutely fine from my at a glance. If we look at Federal Realty Investment Trust, again, very much the same kind of picture. Total real estate assets has been increasing year on year. So they're expanding as well. Total assets, again, they appear to be increasing year on year without fail. Quite a big jump, actually, current year. Total liabilities, they're increasing again, but in proportion. So again, I would say that is absolutely fine. And if we just run my calculation now, you can see the assets versus liabilities, the so total assets versus total liabilities, realty income, is 2.24 whilst FRT is 1.15 that's both great um the both perfect that, that, that's great in, in both instances that's great over two is exceptionally safe over one is safe that's considered good over two is very very safe so realty income corporation is very very safe whilst federal realty is safe we're going to give that one to realty income because it is slightly stronger we're going to give the balance sheet to realty income as well, simply because it's decreased liabilities whilst increasing assets. That's not to say there's anything wrong with federal realties balance sheet. I thought it was a very strong balance sheet looking at it. I'm perfectly happy with it. We could have very easily given this one all, but we're gonna give it to realty income simply because they've actually decreased their liabilities in the current period, which is impressive, while still increasing their assets. But like I say, that was a close call. I'm being picky here. Next, let's take a look at the dividend summary for each of these. So federal realty income, 5.25% dividend yield. It says a 74.94% payout ratio, but we know it's actually the FFO payout ratio that really matters. It's had a four year growth of 4.64%, which is the annualized growth rate of the dividend and it's grown for 52 consecutive years, which is frankly amazing. So there's the all time graph for dividends. So as you can see, they've been increasing them since, well, we know they've been increasing them since 1960 something. So well before Seeking Alpha started tracking this and reporting it. But as you can see, year on year, it goes up every year, up and up and up and up and up which is exactly how we like it, folks. That's good, right? So let's now look at Realty Income's dividend scorecard. So Realty Income Corporation, dividend yield of 4.92%, so a little bit lower. Uh, payout ratio 85.48%, but again, we can pretty much ignore that because it's the funds free cash flow payout we're really interested in. A five year growth rate, slightly lower at 4.38%, but still an amazing time period, 26 years of consecutive growth. And let's have a little look at the dividends. And there we go. There is their dividend graph. That is a beautiful thing, if ever there was. And these are monthly dividends, not quarterly, monthly dividends. But you'll see they're going up every year. They get a bit higher. They've never dropped one. Look at this. Something went wrong over here. But for 26 years, they've grown. What a thing of beauty that is, isn't it, folks? So yeah. That doesn't give you confidence, nothing will. So we're gonna give that a draw. Whilst the dividend growth rate is slightly better for FRT, it's really, really close. So there's not a great deal in it. And 26 years versus 52 years of continuous growth. Well, of course, 52 years is twice as long as 26 years, but still 26 years is a really long time, folks. If I didn't give it a one for that, that would be being really harsh, don't you think? And I can't do that. So we're giving that a draw as well. I think they're much more muchness on those particular metrics. So next, let's look at the forecast by the analysts, see what they're predicting to actually happen. Realty Income Corporation, the analysts are predicting that the share price in 12 months time will be between $72 and $57. This has been done by nine analysts and the average appears to be $65.78. So that's the price they think the share price will be in a year's time. Federal Realty, the analysts believe, and this is 12 analysts have done this, 
it would be between $115 and $73. So they're predicting a 14% upside versus a 15.42% upside. So there's not really a great deal in that. So we're gonna give that a draw. So that's the end of the comparison section. Stick around if you want to see the more detailed research parts and my thoughts, which we'll go through next. But as you can see, this made it a draw. Eight all. They're both very much, much or muchness. To be totally honest with you, there's not a lot in it. They're both great. That's the gist of it. Now let's have a little look at my thoughts here. My value analysis. This is part of my spreadsheet I go through here and you can see the 52 week high and you'll notice the row, I'm gonna highlight it for you there, that row there. That's one of the things I like to look at because I like to see the percentage increase. So for me, that tells me there's more upside available for FRT based on the previous high price. So if it's to go back to where it was before, based on where it is now, there's more upside. As we discussed, the PFFO actually has FIT is cheaper. However, if you look at the intrinsic value, then you'll see there that the price of Realty Income Corporation's share price compared to that intrinsic value, it's a lot closer than FRT's is, which would indicate that Realty is actually better value. And then on the book value per share price, again, Realty Income's price at $56.99 is actually closer to its book value per share price than FRT's value is, which would again indicate that Realty Income Corporation is better value. So there, we are getting mixed signals there. We've got some things saying that one's cheaper and some things saying that the other's cheaper, which is why you can't just use any one metric. You need to take a, a balanced view and decide. And that's why you need to do more research and more in-depth research analysis before making a decision. If you just base it on one metric, there's a good chance you'll get it wrong. So it's better, to, well, I prefer anyway, at least to have a look at lots of metrics first to decide. Uh, funds from operations, it tells the amount there. Funds from operations to liabilities. That's actually an important little metric there. So that's how many years it would take for them to pay them off. In this instance, you'll see Realty Income Corporation is better. It'll take 7.82 years to pay off all of its liabilities from its funds. And obviously we've already discussed the total assets versus total liabilities, which I pulled out for you. And I do that in my normal comparison. My profit analysis, that you can see here, I, I literally look at the total revenue, the net income and the net margin. And then I look at a various different profit margins and you'll see on some of them, Federal Realty is winning, for example, the profit margin as according to Yahoo and the net profit margin, which I've calculated, which thankfully matches Yahoo's, I'm pleased to see. It doesn't always, I've got to say. Sometimes I have done this and what Yahoo has written does not match what I've calculated it to be when I've taken the numbers from the various sheets. Don't know why that happens, but in this instance, I'm pleased to see it's matched, so that's reassuring. The operating margin, which it has Realty Income Corporation as being better on. Return on assets, as you can see, Federal Realty is slightly up, there's not a lot in that. Return on equity, Federal Realty, Federal for FRT is, is well up on that. And then you've got the EBITDA, which is actually more useful for a summary part, which I've not shown you on this, I'm afraid. Sorry. So next I'm going to show you my forecast prices, what prices I'd be looking to buy at, and the dividend yield you'd get at those prices as well. So let's have a look at this. So this spreadsheet here, this part of this spreadsheet will show you that. So I'm forecasting a year's time that Realty Income will be worth $65. If it is, in a year's time, it will have grown by 16.49%. And in five years time, I'm predicting it will have grown by 52.33%. That's based on buying it at $55.88, which is slightly lower than the current price. And FRT, I'm assuming buying that at $79. And if we was to buy it at $79 per share, Again, that's slightly lower than the current price. Then in a year's time, it would have gone up by 7.59%. However, it's one that I think that's gonna speed up later. And I think in five years time, you're looking at a 64.56% return. And I think I'm being conservative. I actually think they'll be better than this. These, when I, when I do this, these are kind of my worst case scenarios. So I do expect that these will be better returns than I've put on here, but these are, when I'm doing my spreadsheet, I try to be conservative. So these are my conservative estimates. And if you look at that top right-hand side there, the 5%, 5.5% and 6%, that section there 
what that tells you is the price you would have to buy the shares for in order to get that percent dividend yield. So to get a 5% dividend yield with realty income, buy it for $56 or less and you've achieved that. If you buy it for $50.90 or less, you've got a 5.5% dividend yield. And if it goes down to $46.7, you're gonna get a 6% dividend yield. And in the other column, that shows you the same thing for FRT. At $84, it's 5% dividend yield. It's already below that price. So you're already getting more than a 5% dividend yield. So if all your target is a 5% dividend yield, it's already a good price to buy. At 5.5% dividend yield, you need the price to go down to $76.4, which is perfectly realistic. And to get a 6% dividend yield, you'd need it to go down to $70 or lower. So that's the prices. Please do let me know if you've invested in either of these two shares or if you're thinking of, and if so, what price you'd be thinking of buying into them at. Personally, I see them as very long-term holds. I think they're both great stocks to hold. Both seem to be real good, solid income companies. So if you're looking for a regular income, I think you couldn't go too far wrong with either of these two. I already personally have shares in realty income. I'm probably going to grow that a little bit, especially if the price dips. With federal realty, I don't actually have a position in that, but I do intend to start one and I'll probably start one this coming week. And then I will buy further on any future dips as well. If you have any shares you'd be interested in me reviewing, please do let me know. I would love to hear from you. Just drop me a comment down below. Other than that, thank you so much for watching and bye bye.